All right, so this is a total experiment here. I've left my homeland. I have, I'm currently without home. I'm in a totally new place, streaming from somewhere I've never streamed from before. At a time I've never streamed at. Feels weird. Anyways, um, welcome to the stream. Uh, this is such a unique time. I've never ever streamed at this time, so I don't know if people are going to get this notification or what. If there'll be anybody in the chat. But I'll be here streaming live for at least an hour. So um, what I'm working on today is uh, still this new boss. The pixel art for this new boss. Sound effects, that kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> He's starting to look a lot better. The last two or three days have um, really improved the boss's feel and artwork and um, one thing that really needs to happen is the sound effects. In fact, I should probably turn off this one sound effect. This is kind of, this is kind of just so not right. Um, that'll be fun to get a really good sound effect for his charged animation, but um, for now, it doesn't sound right, so I'm just commenting it out. Um, I was working on, is animation for when he throws. Okay, so the timing really needs to get better for that throw. So let's work on the timing real quick, and yeah, just that. This is um, freeze sequences. So he does a, he spawns the Ren Freeze, delays a little bit, and then he launches his boomerang. So this launch of the boomerang needs to be a little bit longer. I just increased that by 0.2, so I need to decrease this one by 0.2. Let's get the timing of that just right. Actually, I should really focus on the art for that too. It, the art being right plus the timing. Okay, so I need to pay attention when he does that. So I'm going to slow down time. right that time but the art things are wrong. there's something a little bit off with the art there Yeah, it's awkward. It's awkward. Okay, let's get that to be less awkward. So we've got this animation here, the Ren throw. Ren throw. Um, this first frame here is not bad, where it's uh, kind of a mix of this is where he starts at. I'm thinking, so what I, what I was trying to do here was to have him kind of like reach behind his back. This is this part's really cool, where it does this, whoosh, this super swooshy thing. It works really well for making it look like he's throwing something. Um, this part right here, though, is really just kind of like a little bit... It was, it was meant to be for when he unsheaths his sword. 
Um, so that little bit is needs to be kind of like uh, more aligned with what this is now, this animation has now become. Um, so I'm thinking that he can take his sword from where it is and bring it across the front of his body. Let's, let's try that out. So each one of these frames, I'm going to lengthen the sword, make it in front of his body. Apologies for my sniffles. I've been sick this week. This might be working. This could work out.
Okay, so there's one little bit of an awkward bit where it starts right there. <clears throat> what about this little pause here? Oh yeah, this pause really gives this whole animation some very nice anticipation. Feels good. Um, but yeah, this, this is a tiny, just a tiny bit awkward. It goes too fast from there to there. So I guess in this frame, to keep it somewhat close to, this is where, where you're supposed to, this is where he starts at and is idle. So it needs to go from smoothly from that. These need to be a good blend of that in this frame. So I guess it'd probably be better if instead of it being still the sword being behind him like this, if his arms started coming out straighter, if he's holding it behind him, He's bringing it across, so he's got it like this, and then like this, like the next, it would be like sort of, so his arm would twist up a little bit. And the sword would come more like straight up and down. Okay, that's looking better. But this last bit, it's just the few pixels there that are looking awkward right here. Maybe his head can turn a little more. It'd be nice if his cloak had a little more movement right here. Mm, that's a little funky. Can't be that many pixels. Same thing. Unless maybe this frame also has something like that going on. In this one. Uh, might work.
Okay, I'm liking this a lot better. Feeling a lot more natural. Hopefully this works out in the game. Let's check it out. So it's like it's like 3 p.m. for me right now, but I think it's 11 p.m. in the United States, and when the wee hours in the morning for Europe. So I don't really expect anyone to be on this stream chatting. We'll see. I don't even know this. Is this even working? <laughs> it's recording. I know that much. It might not be streaming, but... Okay, so I want to catch him in slow-mo when he does the freeze. See it in normal motion. Normal timing, I mean. Yeah, that works. Screen shake. This is a just a bit too much screen shake. Been meaning to change that. Let's do the half fat. So ironically, back in the United States, I am not in the United States actually anymore. I'm living in a much less expensive place right now, living, it's kind of a experimental word. Um, ironically, my upload speed at home in Oakland, California, was home, um, <coughs> super bad, super duper bad, I, can, I just have horrible streams, but here, the upload speed is so much healthier. Let's do it just a tad bit more delay before he does this freeze. This is delay 0.5, and then launch the boomerang. So let's do 5.5. Five. <sighs> so if I can find a good time to stream that works for people in the United States, and I guess it would have to be early morning here, which isn't really gonna work. I'm not really an early morning person. I guess I could try and make it work. Okay, speaking of all that, what is the stream health right now? Are we even streaming? It looks all right. I may actually be able to um, um, stream at a better quality. Okay, so let's check out the timing of that in slow motion. <laughs> Okay, that looked 
definitely sense that delay. It's a little bit. See it in regular speed. Yeah, it's a little too slow for me. Let's go a few more tenths. Sorry, um, hundreds of a second. Man, it's funny. Um, man, making games in the last few years has really taught me the difference between like, you know, a tenth of a second is huge, basically. I need to do something here to make this a little more natural. Ah, that was better. I like that time. Okay, um, let's check this in so far, this is really great. Random foes, everything but foes. All right, next animation, I want to work on his final his final bit where he goes into a he goes into a meditative stance. I want that to be a little bit more determined. Right now, when you hit him for the last time, he just sits down in meditation wherever he's at. But what I want him to actually do is warp to the very middle of the screen always and already be in a meditative pose so it's just a very simple animation so this is going to be a combination of changing the AI a little bit and introducing a slightly new animation where he um, warps into a meditative pose in fact the animation could be the first thing to do here So he's going to get into into this pose. Now his intro, when he warps and all that, this I use a whole like 12, 12 frames. Might be a little bit overkill.
I'm thinking like eight frames would be good enough. Starting from blank, ending here. Start off with um, oh yeah, we'll just do the yeah, let's do the first one. Okay, so about forty. 40 ripple. Oh, where? Hmm. I need, I need this. Um, this little outline. So I did. What did this be? This is 20. And then 80. And then back down to 40. Yeah, so 20 is the first one. So this one's 80. Twenty forty eighty. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay to go, go and delete all these ones I'm not using anymore. Forty F. I think all the F's I'm not using. Throw animation as well. Stuff we don't need here. What the heck just happened?
keeping these organized always helps in the future. You come back to a piece of art and you go, what the, what the what? It's like writing good comments in code. <laughs> This should be, this one's 20, 80, 40, and here, we're at 160. Back down to 80. Really does it eighty twice? Two forty, one sixty, okay. Three twenty, two forty. And that's going to be enough. Actually, this last one is kind of cool. Well, I guess it's more because it's got this cool um, extra effect here. Rocket Bunny, what's up, man? How you doing, kid? Yeah, it's whiz after dark. It's actually light here where I'm at. It's like it used to be for you. You're drinking chocolate milk at night. How you been, man? Huh. How's everything going for you? All right, so let's add on this other little bit of animation. Just 
smart wave or just wave. What's new, my man? How's school going? How's life? How's your girlfriend? How's Portland? Oh, nice. Is that exactly the right the same? Oops. Ten, three, eight, five, eight. Oh, yeah, it is. Yes. Cool, now we got a mix of these effects. It's all pretty good. How about me? Things are good, man. Yeah, things are looking up, man. My life has changed radically, but, um, you know, life's good. I'm in Asia right now. Yeah, I'm actually in Thailand. Um, so it's like, it's just like living on my own since, you know, basically parting ways with my woman and all that. Living on my own in the Bay Area and San Francisco and all that would be so expensive. So I'm experimenting with um, living in Thailand right now, which is a hell of a lot less expensive. Yeah, and, and believe it or not, the internet is better. Or at least the upload rate is. Yeah, so I'm I'm all the way in, in Thailand right now. Um, I've been here before, so I already know. I have kind of already know what it's like. Yeah, I like Thailand a lot. It is a cool place. Yeah, um, you know, it's... It's not per there's no perfect place in the world, of course, but um, it's really got its benefits. Um, I think if I just click on these smart waves, Might just sync up the right settings. Sunbringer's going great, man. Yeah. Um, like, there was just the winter sale, so, you know, got some more people playing it, some more, some more sales and stuff like that. And um, I'm almost finished with all this new content for the big update coming out. This boss is one of the last things to do. And, um, and then this will be ready. And then the, the console team, Double Eleven, is going to have to take some time to get it all ready for consoles. And we're going to sync up our releases so it comes out on Steam officially and consoles at the same time. So there's a big update coming, which is going to add a whole bunch of new content. The new, new attacks, like there's the new charged attack, the parry ability, lots of new items, like the ferret drones, which help you get 100% items, stuff like that. So it should be a really fun update for, for fans of Songbringer already. And hopefully it just kind of like ups the game's um, reputation. When the game first came out, it got a, it kind of got a bad rap because people said, oh, the combat's all messed up. Um, which, you know, which was like surprising to me because I didn't know at all what people were talking about at first. But then, you know... Um, after the first combat update, things got better, and now that there's this new charged attack and parry ability, I think it's really, really handled everybody's concerns. I just hope that people realize, you know, realize that it's better, and more people buy it because of that, but we'll see. Yeah, all the consoles that it's already on, not all the consoles, but just, it's already on PlayStation and Xbox, and it'll be, the update will be coming out for those. Um, 
And then, uh, yeah, then there's also going to be the mobile versions to work on. So, like, there's I'll be working on Songbringer for months, months and months left to do on it. Yeah, like some people thought the action felt good. Some people thought it felt weird. Um, but the the first update in the very first week after after launching the game, I fixed like so much of it. But the damage had already been done. So many people reviewed the game and said, "Oh, the combat." So it kind of like put this opinion in people's minds, a reputation that it's got this, you know, wonky combat. But um, like just the other day, someone posted on the Steam forums like, hey, I was hesitant to buy Songbringer because of the reviews saying the combat. So, you know, it's like this one of these things that is just you can't undo, you know, like once you launch your game, you're just like, I don't know, it's hard to get hard to shake it. But hopefully people do realize and hopefully this this new big update does a little bit more towards that. But if not, I guess it's just, you know, start the next game and hope that Hope that I don't make the same mistake twice. Nine two five two five. So, um, what kind of games have you been playing lately, man? Or what have you been doing for fun? Eight one four. It looks like every time I click on this, uh, yeah, every time I click on that effect, it applies the right settings for this wave. So, so this is this adding these two effects together really is a nice combo. You got this little ripply wave effect, and then this also this other type of wave effect. Oh yeah, FIFA. Oh, that's right. Football. Oh, in real life, cool. Oh yeah, you've been playing with Fruity Loops? Cool, man. Fruity Loops was the first music software I ever used. Back in 19... Sorry, 2001? Yeah, 2001 was when I started making music. In Fruity Loops, man. That was back in the day. That was before they called it Fruity Loops Studio. It was just Fruity Loops. You're trying to make a Python script to make your launch pad work better? Cool. Cool, man. Nice. How's that going? Yeah, <laughs> it is, man. It is. Dude, that's so crazy. It's so freaking crazy. Software that you're using right now is older than you. There's a lot, there's probably a lot of software that you use that's older than you. Like, I'm sure all the Adobe software is over 20 years old you're only what are you you're are you 16 yet oh you're not having that much luck oh ah oh. what's the hang up man what's your step what's your next step what do you have to debug to get it to work oh you're almost 15 I could have swore you were already 15. Whoops.
Six one two. Almost getting done with this first animation here. First animation of the stream. So you got the script communicating with it, but you can't get the software to communicate to the script. Ah, okay. There you go. Cool, man. Divide and conquer. You know what to do next. Huh? If you can just get it to talk. Yeah, man. Smooth sailing is ahead. You got this, dude. You got this. You can do it. Didn't you, um, haven't you been DJing some parties and stuff with your friends? Cool, man. Yeah, no worries. You, you always got to, you always start small, right? With anything you do, especially when it comes to things like music, you got to really build up a, um, you know, like people have to know what you're about, what your sound is like, you know, you have to be real consistent with it to build up a strong following and stuff. <laughs> Cool, man. Intricate drum loops. I love drum loops. I love drumming too. I miss my, miss my drums. I miss my music equipment. I miss every, I miss a lot of stuff. I miss marijuana. I'll tell you that. I miss that a lot. You barely get to actual MIDI and stuff. Oh yeah. Cool, man. Drums are a great place to start, especially if you're a DJ. Like, rhythm is incredibly important. Feeling the groove, dancing to your groove, like, dance rhythm and all that is, is paramount. Yeah, yeah, it's it's illegal in Thailand. It's it's like uh, they're starting to they're starting to reconsider their laws here about it, but it's gonna be a while before they, you know, before things actually change. But it's like really serious. You do not want to be caught with weed in Thailand or any kind of drugs. You just don't avoid all drug usage if you're in Thailand. Pretty much anywhere that that's not like hip. You don't wanna don't don't wanna be don't want that. That's a bad thing. All right, so that made these a little less opaque. Two. This one's twenty. Thirty. Yeah. Let's make this right here. Make this one like twenty. Yeah. That's nice. Twenty. 
All right, let's see that animation. All done. Yeah, it looks good. Cool, so let's get this exported. Now I can use this to make him teleport in and out using this meditative pose. This is a new boss altogether. Um, so that's one of the one of the features of this new big update is this brand new boss, and uh, this boss also has well waves of enemies that you fight before you even get to him. So you and a whole like challenging type of sequence of rooms you have to get through before you can get to him. But the benefit to beating this guy is that you gain the parry ability, which allows you to block block attacks with your sword and then also you can learn another ability from him once you get pa once you beat him and you get the parry ability you can go up and you can get another ability from him okay so that's exported let's hook it up into his animations Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this this update. What else is there? Um, oh, there's a whole bunch of new item combos you can do. Like you can make these super fast running boots. If you combine your boots with lightning, you get these mega fast boots. Um, there's the there's the flamethrower. So if you combine your lighter with fire. You get a super fiery like lighter that like does this torchy flamethrowery thing. Um, and then the ferret drones are just super cool. Like when you can find these drones that show you where all the remaining items are. So if you can, it, so it makes it super uh, makes it a lot easier to get 100. percent But especially for players like on consoles, you need some kind of item because. What you can do on Steam is you can like look at your saves or your log.txt after you beat the game and it show it gives you some hints about where the remaining items are. But players on consoles can't look at their log.txt. So there needs to be some kind of like in-game way to help people get 100% items because especially in a game like this with with worlds being procedural, like finding 100% of the items is, you know, something that would be really helpful to have a as you know, an in-game thing, an in-game mechanic. His intro is a delay of 0.35. Let's start with a delay of 0.1 on these. So we've got blink meditate and unblink meditate. Okay, so now the AI part. So he triggers going into his meditation when his hit points are less than 0.5. Then he's got meditating A. Actually, this should be called meditating and this one should be called yeah, release. So if mode 51, this is where he starts to leave. Oh wait, no, he goes into, right, here's where he, okay, he needs to animate. No. Animate on the link, so he disappears. 
Vinny Haynes can meditate. Wait. Maybe there needs to be another mode between these. So he goes, he starts on blinking, and then, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, this is just a text file. It's a, the, the format is called Valtry. Um, but this is the behaviors and all that. Yeah, it makes it super fast. So like, I, all I have to do is edit this text file, rerun the game, no compilation necessary. Um, but this is the, this kind of technique is really only used for, uh, you know, not core game mechanics and things like that. Like you've got to write your core, well, you don't have to, but I like to write most of my game in C++, the core bits, so it's super fast, but then things like this can be, you know, basically what this gets, this all gets processed into something kind of like bytecodes right at it when it starts running. So it is super fast when it's, when it's playing it out. Um, and there's no compilation, so it's a pretty cool, it's like a best of both worlds type of thing. So mode for we need delay. Delay animate for however long the animation takes. And then if mode 49 skin meditate. Animate blink. No wait. This one's blink and this one's unblink. Oh and here. We need to set his position manually. I think you can set position manually. No? Oh, there, there it is. If position, not if. There we go. Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, there. Position. I think you can set position all three factors at once though. Let me look up how the AI system processes this particular behavior, behavior position. This is if position, here's where it's setting the position. If you've got subtypes of X, Y, or Z, otherwise it sets the whole position at once. So you can parse the position. Oh, this is uses area parse position, which means it can even have use using blocks but we're not going to do that okay so that's just yeah just position um right in the middle of the screen set up the skin meditate animate on blink and go into mode 50 where he's just sitting there meditating all right, let's see if that works. I'm going to cheat to hurt him a lot, trigger his meditation, and let's see if this animation plays correctly and he appears right in the middle of the screen. This all just kind of like gels together and works. Oh no, what is he doing? Meditate two, meditate eight, five, six, seven. He's still in mode 49.
Yes, nice. Okay, he appeared in, the, in a, the wrong place though. I don't know why that didn't work. Like 240, 120 should be the middle of the screen. So here he's invincible until you meditate. Yeah, man. Been nice to talk to you as well. See you next time, my brother. Sleep well, my friend. Okay, let's get him to land in the right place now. Okay, at least he's consistent. Is there, a, perhaps, does he have a position offset in his no. Okay, so let's figure out that. I need to open up Xcode, set a breakpoint where it's setting the position, figure out why it's not it's not accurate. Or it's maybe I'm just not understanding what's actually going on. Which is likely the case. Set a breakpoint here. Set a breakpoint here. I swear this function already has area. No, it doesn't. It's weird. Area should definitely be passed into this. Well, not worth doing right now though. Okay, so let's trigger this breakpoint. Oh my god. Oh. I just realized what's wrong. It's the math. It's not 240. It's 210. 420 by 240. Yeah, it's 210 by 120. And probably we want more like 100 to be like a little less. Yeah, we can close this. That was pretty obvious. Now that I think about it. The width is 420, that's the design res, 420 by 240, which is a nice reciprocal nature to it, plus the full 420 thing, I like numbers. Yeah, there we go, cool. He looks like he's about centered in the screen there. Okay, what happens if... I'm standing right where he's about to land. I should get hurt and bounce away. Let's see if that actually happens. I think he was about right here. Oops. Whoa. Hey, man. Leave me alone. Hey. Dude. Foe anymore? Why didn't I get hurt? I was standing on him. Bow static. You know what? I guess he should just spawn some kind of.
like spawn something that damages the player like because he's I think what's happening is the collision system is like recognizing that oh you're you're stuck on this entity so you stop colliding with it and that's why he's not getting damaged that, that doesn't, doesn't make sense because that's how foes work probably because it has static But yeah, it probably makes more sense to like spawn something that damages the player right there. Just animates blink, sets the position, skin meditate. Spawn red unsheath. That unsheath will do this tiny little box where it'll damage the player and kind of like knock them back. Yeah, there we go. Cool. And then the last bit will be when he actually dies or whatever, he'll use the... Meditate warp in reverse. Hello, Philo Mirza. Welcome to this experimental live stream. How are you? Yeah, good. I'm getting damaged every time he warps there. Um, now, okay, so I meditated versus him. And let's see if he does his animation. Okay. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. How is your time going? This all worked out well. This is actually a good check-in point. Let's get that checked in. Meditate warps all done. Ren intro can be reverted. I think I need to, yeah, add those. Should be able to just check him in. He's got this new behavior where he warps to the center of the screen when he's about to meditate, which is makes it look nice and clean. Oh, you know what? I already get committed this same last thing. There you go. Make Ren warp to center of screen when doing meditate. Okay. Um, there are some more animations I want to do for that final meditation, but it's probably better to start these other animations like there's still some the animation work left to do and some sound effects left to do. Oh, and the charge would be nice if the charge animation had a few more frames. Yeah, this is full-time. Um, I've worked on Songbringer full-time for the last three years, actually. Um, I started out working on it full-time, uh, just risking my time. Um, I had no money, no income, 
and I just basically used the last bit of my savings to get about four months of this game finished. So I kind of had a prototype, and then I launched a Kickstarter. Uh, thankfully, the Kickstarter succeeded. I'm eternally grateful to all the Kickstarter backers, and um, that funded the project for like another six to nine months, or about nine months. And then um, a publisher picked it up too and helped fund the rest of it. Uh, they're they're Double Eleven. They're amazing people. Such a great publisher to work with, and they helped get it on consoles as well. So, yeah. So that's how I've, how I've been able to do this full time. So this animation needs a few more frames built into it to make it a little more smooth, like a frame between this one and that one, or maybe at least like, yeah, between these two. Okay, let's do this. So I'm gonna double up all these frames, which means I want to have the duration. Okay, let's start making so he should be is that about right? I think that's an old animation, so let's grab Frame number one from his idol. There we go. Yeah. You're scared to go full time on your own game? I fully understand that. I was quite scared to do it myself. Um, literally no income and burning up the very last bits of my savings was one of the most nerve wracking times of my entire life one of the most desperate times of my entire life. But I was passionate about this and I'm glad it succeeded. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a few tips, tricks though. It wouldn't have worked if I hadn't have devoted a like part of my time every day to marketing. So, um, you know, like you see me right here doing this live stream. I, when I started Songbringer, I started experimenting with different social networks like Twitter, Tumblr, Twitch. Um, I had not been using any of those before that to market my games at all. I thought I was, because I had made games back in the 90s when you never did this. In the 90s, you just made a game and then you released it. Hopefully you had a publisher to help you. But today in the 2010s and the 2000s and all that, like it's a whole different game. Like social media is huge. So I just, I figured that the best way to do, to build a following was through social media. And, and I wanted to make social, e social media easy for me, right? Like what, what was the things that felt natural to me? You know, like, like how could I build a following in a natural way? And since I'm a solo developer, like I do all this by myself, like I had to find a way to do it efficiently. Like I had to be able to use my time as wisely as possible. And so live streaming turned out to be one of the best things I could do because not only can I work on the game, but I'm also doing marketing at the same time. And I think lives, 
if I hadn't done live streaming, like I, I don't think the Kickstarter would have succeeded um, because for the four months of building the prototype, I had also been building up a following. There were a lot, I had a lot of followers on Twitch already and a good amount of followers on Twitter as well. And um, without that, I, I guarantee you the Kickstarter would have failed. Um, but there were a lot of dedicated followers already following Songbringer when the when the Kickstarter launched, and that's really what made it all succeed. So, yeah, I mean, I recommend if you if you do want to make that leap, you know, if it if at some point you got the courage and you want to make that leap and you want to work on your own game full time, um, have a good plan in place, you know, like have a good plan for how you're actually going to. Uh, live, you know? And, um, and don't take it personal too. If, if like, if you're like, if you do fail at a Kickstarter or crowdfunding or something like that, or you make that leap into trying to work on your game full time and it doesn't work, like, don't take it personal. Take it really like, okay, what can I learn from this experience? Like, the game I made before Songbringer was a financial flop. I spent two years, um, I had worked on that one full time as well. So, I spent two years of my life and, and my buddy spent two years of his life as well. Neither of us had an income the entire time and I spent like, so much, I, I racked up $18,000 worth of credit card debt. This is before Songbringer. It was a game called Hero Bash. I made that. And um, it hurt a lot to have that game be a financial failure. But it taught me the most important lessons I ever learned about how to succeed with your creativity, with making your games. If I hadn't had those lessons, I wouldn't have started live streaming, I wouldn't have started marketing my own games, I wouldn't have even been interested in doing a Kickstarter, like, it was critical, critical to my success. So that's that was my lesson there, was to not take that, even though it hurt so much, like to not take it personal and just to learn from your mistakes, you know? Um, and then, of course, maybe, you know, you succeed on your first try, you know, there's always that, that that too, so. Sorry for the ranting there. I don't, I don't mean to like, you know, rant at all, but like, uh, you know, I just wanna be helpful. So he gets into this frame here, like he starts there. Hey, Chocolate Beer, what's up, man? I haven't seen your name in forever. How you been, man? So let's make that just a slight change. So this frame is what goes back just a tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah, I had been for a while there. I'm in a totally different time zone now, so this is kind of a completely experimental live stream. I, what time is it for you right now in Germany? It's like early morning, right? It's um, it's like four in the afternoon right where I'm at. It's 4.20 exactly. Yes. Oh, I still miss marijuana. It's 10 in the morning. This, maybe this is a good time to stream then. You played Songbringer for a few rounds? Sweet, dude. Oh, I'm honored. I'm honored. Yeah, it's 420. Yes. Yes and no. I 
I'm currently in Thailand, which is an, an, a country that is not friendly to marijuana yet. It is becoming so, but it is not yet. I know, it's... <laughs> I'm weeping tears, I'm weeping tears being here. Like, I'm, I don't know why I'm even here. Jeez, like what the? Good, I'm glad that helps. I'm glad that helps a lot. You've worked on your current game for almost three years? Wow. Oh, so you did early access and it was a failure? Okay. Yeah, yeah, working on marketing and, do, and building a community is essential. It's completely essential in today's um, today's world of game development. Like, if you're not building a following, you're just gonna. It's like running at a wall. You know. It's like running straight at a wall as fast as you can. It's like sprinting at a wall as fast as you can, and then doing marketing and building a following is like sprinting at a wall that has a door that's that's open <laughs> you know like marketing and community is like opening opening a door so you don't hit a concrete wall at full speed but i hope i hope that that was a good lesson for you you know what i mean like it could it could be like like me like that was the most important lesson i think i've ever learned in game development Okay, so this frame, let's get him to be scrunched down his upper body one, one pixel there. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding in some frames to this animation, making this a little more. Still running into the wall? I hear ya. Well, um, how could you build a following and a community for your game in a way that feels natural for you, personally? There we go, good. That's a nice little transition between those. Okay, so this frame here, oh. It does not need this. Uh, when I first drew this guy, he originally had a sheath where his sword went, but now I'm just having this guy just hold his sword like a, like a Chinese warrior. I love that, I love how Chinese Martial artists, war swordsmen, they always just carry their sword. They don't ever have a sheath. Or, I mean, they have a sheath, but they don't, it's not like a, on their belt. Like they just carry it. I think, that's a, I think that's super cool. Or at least in all the kung fu movies I've seen, it works that way. When will you be able to? Very soon. Um, if you want to play the beta version, uh, you can fight this guy maybe in like the next week. I'll have this finished and upload it to the beta version on Steam. Um, but officially, it's probably going to be about a month, I would imagine, until it gets... Don't take my word for that exactly, but maybe about a month because it's going to be a simultaneous... Uh, release on consoles as well as Steam. So the con so basically, I have to finish it, and then the guys at Double Eleven have to incorporate that all into the console version, 
And then Sony has to approve it. Microsoft has to approve it. And then it can all get launched at once. So the logic there is that, you know, once it's like, if it's, if it's a simultaneous launch, you got that synergy of marketing going on. So like if it's out on the same time at, as, on, you know, PlayStation, and Xbox and Steam, like you're going to get a good synergistic effect, hopefully. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, if you want to play it right now, um, or I mean, as soon as possible, you can play the beta version on Steam. Let me show you what this guy's even like so far. Um, this is kind of a fun fight. You actually have to, he's in this one, one cave. Um, if you, you played Songbringer already, so you probably are familiar with this one. There's this one cave in the north of the overworld that has these like computery things inside it and there's nothing else but these two computers that just have some dialogue that's where this is and there's like a sequence of rooms you have to kind of get through first and then once you get to this room you have to fight a whole bunch of waves of enemies before you fight this boss yes pc master race yeah there was a sweet ass piece of art from, oh man, I forget his name. He's an amazing artist. But yeah, he titled it PC Master Race. It just made me think of that. So yeah, this is this boss here is like no other so far in Songbringer in that he's super teasy. Like as, as soon as you, you get near him, he just tries to warp away. Um, and the only way to really hit him is to is wait till he starts to charge like that. But when he's charging, he's, he releases this super powerful charge attack, so he just kills you if you're near him. So it's kind of like a, it's a tricky boss fight. I'm not actually sure what the best way is to fight him yet. I've just been cheating the whole time and using the cheat codes to, um, the debug mode cheat codes to do, to heal myself. But I imagine if you have plenty of cactuses and you use your ranged weapons, you can fight this guy and get past him. Oh, the stream was buffering. Oh. Duh. Well, I'll keep I'll keep fighting him here for a second. Maybe it'll stop buffering for you. Yeah, so um the big, the big thing in this new update to Songbringer is that you've got this charged attack. So you can hold down your sword button and then let it go to release a charged attack. And it's pretty cool because it gives you like another option for how you use your sword. Nice, you're back, cool. Yes, you can see him, nice. So what I was saying is you got this charged attack in the new update. And this guy, this boss here, also has a charged attack. But the char your charged attack is it, ch it changes the whole game about how you play it because you can either you can either use your sword like you normally would, or you can charge it up. So it really gives you that option of do I want to just mash the sword button, or do I want to be smarter and hold it down and release a charge when I'm ready. Yeah, this guy's this guy's really teasy too. So like if you get near him, he'll warp away usually. Thanks you guys. I just cheated some more to heal myself. But yeah, you wear him. He's kind of your this guy right here is actually your friend. He's one of the guys from Songbringer, so um from your ship. So there's Ren and Keel, they're brothers. And you know Keel is already one of the bosses in this game. And then Ren here is also a boss, but he's your friend. So when you fight him to the end, you actually meditate to beat him. You always try to be smarter? Whoa. I guess 
another way to fight this guy would be with the, um, uh, like throwing your bombs. Like ranged attacks can work really well with him because as soon as you get near him, he warps away. Unless he's charging. So when he's charging, he's open to attack. So this boss fight is is really it feels a lot different than most boss fights because of that. His just like warpy warpiness. And then he's also got this thing that slows you down, so it makes it it makes it really hard to get near him. So ranged attacks will probably be best for fighting him. I'm thinking it'll be neat. it'll be interesting to see what strategies that other players can come up with to fight him. There's a lot of ways to do damage. Like, especially depending on what um, elements you've crafted and stuff. Yeah, this is actually a pretty fun boss fight, I gotta admit. And he, oh yeah, he's also got that parry ability there, which needs artwork. I haven't actually done the artwork yet for that at all. But yeah, I'll cheat to get him down. So once you um, once you get him down to enough health, he goes into this meditative pose, and then you have to meditate to beat him, basically. So you don't actually kill him; you just win because he's your friend. Okay, so let's get back to this animation. So I'm, I'm working on his. This is where he builds up his charge. Where he goes into this building up the charge thing, and this is this animation right here is where he's charged up already. So I'm just working on this building up the charge animation to add in twice as many frames because it's a pretty slow animation, so it looks it just needs more more frames. So I added a frame there that turned out all right. But I can see another frame in between these, right there. Make a blend of these two. Yeah. What's up, Rebusy? Yeah, Photoshop does have a timeline. Yeah. What's this say? Is this is this Chinese right here? What do these two characters say? Yeah, Photoshop is a timeline. You just go window timeline. And then you've got two different options for it. You've got a, two different kinds of timelines. There's a video timeline and then a frame-based timeline. I'm using the frame-based timeline. Uh, that's what I thought. Lots of justice, kind of? Cool. Awesome. Yeah, you, um, you guys learn stuff, and I learn stuff from you, too. A lot. Probably some of the best things I've learned in the last few years have come from people on the streams. And it's been obvious stuff. Super obvious stuff, like, what? I should have known that, but but thank you guys for teaching me, showing me the light. Okay, so I'm gonna get a frame that goes between this one and that one. This one is frame zero, zero. I know, it's always the obvious stuff, right? Well, um, Ni Hao, Reevesy, Ni Hao is, um, Ni Hao is Mandarin, is that right? I don't know much Chinese, but I, I, I want to visit China. I especially want to visit Southwest China and climb some mountains there. OK, 
Okay, so let's take frame zero there and let's make it. Actually, we'll go make a copy of this one. This will be like a blend of those two. Okay, so we want to go from there to there. So he puts his head to the left a little. Let's get that pixel going. Pixel shift. Oh yeah, and he's gonna squat down a little bit more. Does this, is sword gonna move? I think his sword should stay, I don't know, maybe about the same. Okay, his cloak needs to adjust a little bit too. Maybe a lot actually. Yeah, this frame, this cloak can come back. I get a little bit of like that going on. And then this frame a little more. Yeah, this will be good to have this animation just have twice as many frames. It's actually pretty simple to do too when you've already got like half the frames already there. It's pretty easy to blend two frames together. Okay, so let's do one that's going from that one to that one. Yeah, I gotta get to work, I understand, man. Nice seeing you again as well. Catch you next time.
Ooh. Cheers, man. Thanks for joining the stream. I'll probably be streaming at times more like this in the future, I imagine. This is a good time for me to stream here where I'm at now. Yeah. All right, I think this little upgrade to this animation is about finished. I haven't added another frame here, here, or here yet. Maybe I'll cheat though and just make this. It needs to be point four because that's that would account for these last frames so let's try that out um now it has exactly twice as many frames um let's see what that looks like in the game before i invest any more energy into these last like couple frames because these are cool um because they this is where the sword is moving pretty quickly it's got this whole motion blur going on so it'd be nice to keep these keep it without doubling these frames up it probably looks best that way. So let's see what this looks like before anything else is done. All right. So I'm going to run the game. And uh, I'll use the, the time slowing debug commands to slow down time and take a real close look at how that looks. Okay, he's going to go right into his charge here. speed yeah it looks really really good even at slow speed it looked good awesome oh man that's really satisfying to have that animation just a little higher quality more frames okay so I'm getting close to the end of this stream but before I go I want to do um, one little test to see if the The melee animations would look good with his throw. He's got the throw south. Let's just see what this looks like by changing all these to look. 
throw south. So that's going to change not only his um, his melee attack, but his charged double attacks as well. So I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that was kind of cool actually. But I think I like the other ones better. Okay, so I gotta just see what it looks like when you actually parry, when he parries. So I gotta get close to him, use the sword attack. It's difficult to get him to do his parry because he's so warpy. There we go. Oh, I forgot I didn't do his parry ability. Oh, so maybe I don't need to change those. I just need to change his parry. so fast I couldn't tell but look right uh, well I, you know what I, my intuition says it did look okay but I also noticed he did do one of his regular melee attacks so I do need to I do need to update those there's three more animations that are pretty intense animations that need to be done to make him just all good with all of his animations but that's about it. I mean, most of the pixel art is finished for this new boss, which is an incredibly time-consuming task sometimes. With this boss, it definitely has been. There's like, there's the phase of the pixel art where you're kind of getting the feel for it, and that's always the hardest one to break through and be like, oh, what should this guy feel like? What should, what should this art look like? And stuff like that. But now that, you know, most of that's finished, it's like smooth sailing. So that's going to be it for this live stream. Um, this is the first live stream I've done while not being in my homeland. I am in a different place now. A less expensive place. Um, so this is kind of an experiment, you know, doing these live streams out here at a different time and all that. So um, hope you enjoyed watching this stream or this video on YouTube. And I'll be back with more later on this boss will be finished soon and the update the major update for Songbringer will be coming out relatively soon so cheers thanks for watching everybody and i appreciate all of your support